Let me start the live transcript. Awesome. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the orientation for our Badgers. Um, we are going to go over a lot of stuff today, um, mostly around what the DEI event badging um, initiative is, how it works, how, how the flow goes, what the levels are, all, all the things, all the things we're going to go over today. We're also going to go over um, and we're going to do one together. We're going to do a review all together so we can, you can see how that works. And then at the end, I'll give you a checklist of things that you can do um, as some next steps after this meeting to kind of get ready. Um, at any time, if you have questions, um, probably the easiest way is to either interrupt me or um, do the raise hand emoji. That's also a reaction, whatever they call it. Um, that's also perfectly fine to do, and, and we can stop at any time. So um, Ruth is also on the call. She's heavily involved with the Badger program as a, a co-lead on the team. So um, my name's Elizabeth. I'm the Chaos Community Manager, for those who don't know, and I do, um, with Ruth, co-lead this, this Badger team. So. Um, Ruth, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Ruth, and I, as Elizabeth said, I co-lead and also, you know, maintain the budging um, project. And I know Elizabeth's going to give history, but we started budging in 2020, and it's been two years now, I think. So I have, I started at the initial phases. I started contributing to the budging project at the initial phases and then I moved from being a contributor to in the project and I'm heavily involved in a lot of things around badging and I'm excited that we have a handful of reviewers that is going to join the reviewers team so yeah welcome everybody. Thanks Ruth. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so really the event badging initiative, as Ruth said, um, started a couple of years ago. Um, the goal is to get event organizers who are running open source events like Open Source Summit or other events, um, All Things Open, PyCon, you know, whatever, any of those kind of open source technology type of events. Um, the goal is to give them a prompt to really examine what they're doing at, as they organize this event to center diversity, equity, and inclusion in the way that they organize the event and, and the experience that they provide to their attendees, speakers, and also any sponsors or vendors um, who might be having an exhibit uh, or a booth at their event. So, um, so we want them to give them a way to do that. And then we also, by giving them a badge, they can signal to other um, potential attendees, speakers, or sponsors that, you know, they care about diversity, equity, and inclusion at their event, and they're really doing all that they can to make the event a safe and welcoming, friendly, fun place to be, um, so where everybody feels like they belong to, to um, they belong at that event. So those are really the goals of what we're trying to do. Um, I will also talk about the different levels, but there is a bridge between um, what the DEI working group here at Chaos does in terms of developing the metrics around diversity, equity, inclusion, and then we're trying to put this into actual practice um, here in the real world um, at these actual events. So, but I'll talk about how that bridge works. Um, you may have heard these kind of um, uh, different words being thrown around. Um, there are kind of two facets to this badging thing that we're doing here. Um, what we're doing right now is only around events. We are not concerning ourselves with any kind of project badging at this point in this group. We're just working on events. So uh, again, they're, they're just more straightforward because events have a start and end date. It's like a one-time thing. Someone applies for an event or applies for a badge for this one event. The event is over. The next event, they have to apply again. Um, it's also kind of difficult to determine or define what a project is. Is that an organization? Is it a repository? Is it a group of repositories? I mean, even chaos is hard to, uh, chaos is a project, but we also have sub projects underneath um, the chaos kind of umbrella. So it's kind of difficult to, to define what a project is. 
Um, and then things like family friendliness, it's kind of hard to, to translate that into what does that mean at a project level? So um, there, are, there are some differences. Um, there's a lot more nuance to projects. A lot of, uh, it's a little bit more complex. So for our purposes here, we're just talking about events and people who apply. So a high level overview of how this whole thing works is that um, they're going to, an event organizer is going to apply for a badge. And then they're gonna have, we're gonna have two separate human reviewers, which would be you folks. And those are who we call badgers. Um, everything is transparent and open. So it's all done on GitHub. And then we also keep a list of who has earned the badge in case somebody wanted to just verify um, that uh, somebody who has listed the badge or posted the badge publicly actually did earn the badge. There are different badge levels. Um, th they look like this. Um, we have pending, passing, silver, and gold. Um, let me go back a minute. We have a review checklist that you'll see in a second. Um, so basically, however many of those checks are checked, that's how the badge is is um, defined. So they uh, the bot will calculate the badge, but we'll talk about that again in a minute. So essentially, there's a checklist. We check some boxes. The bot figures out how many of those boxes are checked and then assigns one of these levels based on that answer. So less than 40% would be less than 40% of the requirements met or the box is checked, for instance. Gold is greater than 80%. Most of the applications we get to date have been silver or gold. So, um, but we'll talk about how that, how that, what that means in a minute. Um, team members that you, if you have questions, you can reach out to um, myself and Ruth, as we mentioned before, of course. Um, Enoch, I don't know if you know him, but he is um, the lead for the badging bot, which we'll talk about what that bot does for us. And then Kingsley is the lead for the, oh, I spelled that wrong. Here we go. Badging website redesign. Um, uh, so if you have any interest in or questions around the badging website, because it is going to be a separate than the main chaos website. Um, so if you have questions on that, you can um, you can connect with Kingsley on that design and that front end work. Um, and if there's anybody else on that team that's been leading this, um, let me know. I'll add them to this list. So somebody just ping me or put it in chat or something. OK, how are we doing? Any questions so far? So far, so good. All right, awesome. We'll keep going. OK, so the workflow right now is kind of long, <laughs> but um, it is what it is. So uh, we'll just run through this. There are actually two slides for this <laughs> because it's so long, <laughs> but it is what it is. So um, first things first, an event organizer um, says, hey, I want to apply for a badge. So they go to the Chaos website, they fill out an application, and they answer a bunch of questions um based on dei metrics that the chaos project has defined and uh, they're all about how they're centering dei in their event so we're looking for things like is the event family friendly um is the event um do you have accessibility in the event um do you have um any diversity access tickets available so you are so we can help lower that barrier of entry for those who have been traditionally underrepresented or marginalized in tech. Um, do you have any scholarships, things like that? Um, do you have a code of conduct around your event? And is it clear how people can access that and know what to do if something happens at the event? So there are questions like that. We're not really making judgments on those. Like we're not gonna go and say, yeah, your code of conduct is, is not good it's not you know what we would want it's it's mostly just like have you thought about this tell us how you've thought about this tell us the process that someone you know could could do or how can someone find out what the process is it's mostly about um making sure that the information that the event organizer has thought of or they've worked on is available and easy to find for attendees and, and speakers um so yes, the application is based on the DEI metrics, which the chaos working group, the DEI working group has developed. Um, once they hit submit on their application, 
we're going to go through this process so you'll see it firsthand um, but they uh, are given a block of text which they will um, copy and paste and open an issue in the badging org over on github um, so then after that um, I will assign two badgers uh, to, to do that review and then oops you'll be asked if you are one of those badgers and you'll get you'll get tagged on that issue if or, or assigned to the issue sorry you'll get assigned to that issue um, it will ask you if you're able to do the review and if you are you just would mark yes and if you're not you can mark no and that's completely fine because obviously people are busy they have vacations they might be sick you know whatever um, might be preventing you from being able to do this review um, so that's totally fine um, if you say yes you'll get a checklist with your name on it and then um, it'll have the information that the event organizer provided you'll just kind of go through and verify that what they said was true. So you might have to go out to their website, find that information based on the links that they've given you um, just to verify and, and kind of check things over, um, you know, and just generally make sure that what they're saying is, is accurate. Um, and then you check however many boxes would apply to that. Um, and then if you have any questions or you're not sure about something, you can't find the information about something, absolutely, um, you can ask the event organizer because this is meant to be a conversation with them uh, back and forth of, you know, um, what we're perceiving versus what the event organizer is providing. So definitely a back and forth conversation can happen. Um, and that's the goal. We're trying to be a more of a partner with the event organizers instead of, um, you know, judging you or being like the ultimate authority. No, it's much more of a partnership. So um, when you're done with, then with the review, you would tag me and I am actually Elizabeth N, not Elizabeth B, because, you know, marriage and changing names and all that stuff is like <laughs> ruins your personal brand. What can I say? <laughs> so I'm Elizabeth N. I'm Elizabeth N everywhere on Twitter, LinkedIn, like everywhere, but whatever. Um, and then I'm going to run a command called result. And that um, issues a, a, a request to our badging bot that um, the badging bot will give us a preliminary score, a preliminary percentage of how many boxes will be checked. Um, if the event organizer is okay with that score, um, then um, I will run this command, the end command. And if they're not okay with that score and they want to make changes, they absolutely can. Like if they would get a, a silver badge, but they want to try for a gold badge before we officially issue it, they want to go back and make some changes on their website or some changes around their policies or procedures, um, they absolutely can. That's up to them and we'll just wait until they're ready to, to re-review. Um, and it wouldn't then require a whole new review with a whole new set of reviewers, maybe just a refresh from the reviewers that were already assigned to that issue on whatever had been changed. Um, so then eventually the, everybody's okay with the results, everybody's on the same page. Um, I'll issue that end command and the bot will generate the badge HTML and markdown codes that then the event organizer can take and use on their website, use in any GitHub repos, GitLab, rep like wherever they wanna put that badge, they can put it. Um, and then the end command will also close the issue and add the event to our running list of all, all the projects that we've, or oh, sorry, all the events that we've badged thus far. And that we keep that in the readme file. Um, I'm going to stop for a second, and again, we're going to go through this together so you can actually see what these things look like, but I just want to stop for a second to see if anybody has any initial questions about this workflow. Join us. Hi, we are uh, recording this so you can catch up from the from anything you missed, just so you know. All right, thank you very much. So I know this is really confusing and it's a lot, but um, again, we're going to go through it again. So, um, okay. So if someone has questions, you can just, um, you know, use the raise hand emoji or um, you can interrupt, you know, however you want to do it, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, or you can also put it in the chat. Okay, meet, you have a question. Go for it. Oh uh, yeah, actually I wanted to ask over here, like, um... 
you know you mentioned that they apply for a bot uh, for a badge specifically on the website so like are they given a link to where exactly the conversation is going on or was it what is it like how do they get redirected to the like uh, to the github uh, you know the issues page where exactly they'll see what uh, you know what review is going on so do they get something like an email or do they get some link over there itself uh, you know to get redirected to there mm -hmm. so Yes, that's a, an excellent question. So the way it works right now, um, and it may change with the new badging website, but the way it works right now is when they fill out the application, the, they're given this block of text, the event organizer is given back a block of text that they have to personally copy and paste into their own new issue. So it's it's not a super smooth flow right now, to be perfectly frank, and it does require them to have a GitHub account, it requires them to know how GitHub works and how to open an issue in our repository, you know, so it's not great, but that is how they would, they, they are the ones that open the issue, so they already have that link. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, is there like something, okay. uh, you know, uh, how long do we have an issue open, like, you know? As you mentioned, that they there might be some, uh, uh, let's say they they don't uh, you know come back with anything or they're not updating it or something like that. So what's the end to it? Uh, are we having something with the bot itself? Mm -hmm. Excellent questions. Oh my gosh, these are great questions. Um, so the bot is supposed to. So there's a couple of things here. So when an issue is opened, I get a notification and I go and assign the reviewers, and I have a. Um, a spreadsheet that I keep track of that has uh, all, everybody's name and like the last time they had a review and how many reviews they've done, which is not perfect. And I think that's a goal of the bot is to automatically assign people, which would be great. <laughs> so it's not working on, you know, my delay and my bottleneck. So that's awesome. Um, but when you get that prompt and you get assigned, you have 24 hours to respond whether or not, yes, you can do it. Now that's that's actually the bot it gives you a lot longer time right now, but it's supposed to work 24 hours so there's one day delay or one day already built in. Um, and then if you can't do it, I got to reassign blah blah blah, so the goal is to get this whole thing done within a week or so, depending on when the event is. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. event organizers wait until the last minute, so we kind of rush those through, um, but um, the goal is around a week. For the assigned, assigned um, badgers to say yes and start the review, finish the review, the event organizers that back and forth. And sometimes it does take longer, but we we try to get it wrapped up as quickly as we can. Yeah, got it, got it. And uh, like if the organizer itself, uh, like they're not active from their side, so what exactly will be the end? Like, uh, you know, yeah. they're not uh, updating it or rather they're not, you know, uh, giving it like a thought if uh, they really are satisfied with the uh, score or they want to improve on it. So how do we end that? End? So that would be on me as the maintainer, um, just to kind of keep an eye on those. And if they haven't responded, I'll just go ahead and issue the badge. And then if they come back and say, oh, no, 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 wait, 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 then we can reopen the issue and, and talk about it. But yeah, I usually just give them a couple of days. And if they haven't responded, um, then I'll just close. I'll just do the end, the slash end command to, to generate the badge and close the issue. Okay. okay, got it, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. These are great questions because we have had um, that issue before, we've had that problem before where, you know, they never, the event organizers never responded and the badge didn't get issued. So yeah, it's a great question. Emanuela, you have a question too. Yes, my question is um, you said that the issues um, can be assigned to budget. Okay. So, what is like, the issue that your budget is interested in and what didn't get assigned to? So, that's like my question. I think I get the whole workflow, right? I'm kind of having a hard time hearing you. Did anyone else, was anyone else able to catch what Emanuela's yeah. question? Emanuela, would you ask if, um, like, for example, a badger is interested in a particular issue and they don't get assigned? Was that your question? Yes, um, yes, that's my question, Ruth, sorry. Okay. That's, yeah. So you so want to know? Oh, go ahead. 
Okay, so you want to know if like you can pick which or you can take as much as or you can decide which one you want to um attend to or badge or be a reviewer for yes yes like apart from just like declining when assigned whether you can do the review or not like what if you can like ask to be assigned to something like that for a project that you never go assigned or something like that or a, a issue so yeah that's what i'm uh, trying to ask yeah, that would be an interesting feature, but we, we don't actually have that right now. Like Elizabeth said, she has like a spreadsheet where she keeps like track of, you know, people that have been working on issues or on the badging issues, the applications. So she just like, so we don't get to overwhelm one person. We kind of like, um, you know, put it like one person, next person. And even recently we've had like a lot of applications and our team has been kind of like overwhelmed right, with a lot of applications. And that's why we're even more excited to have more people join. So, but in a case like that, um, I think you can also like, if for example, there are some times that people decline, um, maybe at that time they, they are not available for reviewing, um, you can indicate to take it up sometimes when people decline i think that's that can also work but then you'd have to check through it we don't have like an automated um thing that can notify and and that would be something interesting to build where if an issue like because usually it's just um if you're watching the repository like if you watch the repository that you get notified for every issue or every activity that goes on 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 the badging uh, repository, but if you're not watching it, you don't get notified. Maybe we want to do um, an automated thing where if um, an application is submitted, the badging team gets notified. I think there's some way we can work around that because watching a repository makes you get notified of every activity that goes on. So yeah, that's um, a great question. And maybe that's something that we can speak with Enoch that's in charge of the badging bot too. Did that answer your question, Emanuela? And I'm so sorry. I keep I keep hitting mute for you, and I'm trying to mute me. And I guess I don't know how Zoom works today. My brain. So sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. It, it, she answered my question. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. So before we go on, do we have any other questions on this high level kind of overview of how this whole thing works? Oh, okay. Um, so let's stop for a minute and do one together, um, if that's okay with everybody. And you're gonna watch me fumble through this because because <laughs> I'm really bad at this whole process. So yeah, you're gonna watch me fumble, but that's okay. We're recording it, so anybody can make fun of me later on. That'll be great. Um, so right now, here is how someone would open an application an event organizer. So I'm eventing, I'm eventing. <laughs> I'm organizing an event uh, called Elizabeth Khan and it's amazing. And I want to get an application for a badge. I want to get a badge on my website. So I'm coming to the chaos website um, and I'm landing. I, I got here from this DEI event badging link and it comes to this. <clears throat> so this will also kind of give you a background about like why somebody would apply and some things to read before I start my application as an event organizer and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I can either do an in-person or virtual. So let's do, let's do an in-person event. So when I click that, I get this drop down that has all this information that I'm gonna put in. So my event name is Elizabeth Con 2023. And the event website is Elizabeth on oops, 2023.com. And I am the organizer of this event. So I'm just going to put yes here. Um, and then I'm going to say, okay, so the first metric we're looking at is event demographics. And that is a metric on our, on the DEI website, uh, or sorry, the, under our metrics here, up here. So yes, I'm committed to speaker diversity and inclusion. Um, and then we link to some references here. 
detail the process for measuring event demographics. So we survey speakers and attendees. Oh, this is, we're just talking about speakers. We survey speakers when they register for their demographic information. Um, provide an example of an opt-out option. Okay, we'll say um, the registration page is here, um, xyz.com, whatever it was. Okay, provide an example. Actually, you know what? Um, and just to make sure that everybody knows that it's a testing event because it you know if we open an issue I don't want somebody to say like oh no you didn't get an, a badge or whatever Elizabeth you suck you're terrible. Um, it's just a pretend event it's not a real event just to be clear. <laughs> okay, provide an example of a demographics text inbox input box on the event registration page. Um, yeah registration page is here yeah. So here are the criteria that we're, we're looking at. Yes, my event commits to attendee diversity and inclusion. Here's the feedback page it is here. Whatever. Um, is the event team using feedback from previous events attendees? Yes. Provide an example. Here's an example. Blah, blah, blah. Does the event team plan to use feedback from this year's events? You guys are getting the y'all are getting the uh, the general gist of these questions, right? I don't know if I would actually really want to go through all these. How can attendees learn more about accessibility at the event? Um, our accessibility page is here. Page.com, whatever. Does the event platform allow attendees to suggest future accommodations for this event? Yes. Here's the process. Blah. Will the event platform be accessible after the event? Yes. Link to YouTube recordings is here. Blah. And these are the criteria we're actually looking at. Retention, accessibility requests, those kinds of things. Yes, our um, event has a code of conduct. Yes, it's posted. Here it is, codeofconduct.com, whatever it is. Um, yes, this we have diversity access tickets. Um, info is here. Info is here, whatever, whatever. Provide a link, blah.com. And then, yes, we are a family friendly event. We want them, yes, we provide childcare at the event. We want them to bring their kids because kids are awesome. And in a lot of cases, they're way better than adults. So, yes, we want them to bring their uh, fun events and activities. Links to stuff.com, whatever, how we do this family friendliness at the event. And then we're going to hit submit. So once we click submit, we have to have our GitHub account to finalize the issue on the GitHub website. So we're going to hit submit. And here's the block of text that this person has to get. So I click to copy. Actually, I tried this once and it didn't work right. And it, it freaked me out. So I'm just going to, I'm going to, because I thought, oh my God, did I just lose all that? So I'm just going to copy and then go over to paste move to github and it oh it pops it right up for the person um so it will link you know right over here but then i'm just going to paste all of that and i'm going to submit my new issue so this is now a new issue in the event diversity and inclusion repo in badging and this is what it looks like and this is basically what i just answered all these questions are right here. So those kind of areas. The badging bot also will pop up and says, thanks for applying. Make sure you've read through the guidelines and then your role as an applicant. So now is the part, now is the part where the badgers take over. So this issue will be open. We have a new issue. So me as Elizabeth, as a maintainer, I will come in and I'm gonna assign some people 
So I will assign, just for the purposes of this, I'm going to assign myself, I'm going to assign Ruth. And those are the two people that we assigned, the two badgers. So then what happens is the badging bot gives myself and Ruth the option to say, are we available for this review or not? And I will say, yes, I'm available. I'm going to say yes, hold on. <laughs> you can say no, it's fine. <laughs> or you can say yes. You want me to just mark you as yes? I can, because I'm right here. I think I can, maybe, I don't know. Maybe you have to be the one to do it, actually. I don't know. Let me see. Okay. I am okay. ready there. Let's do it. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so as you can see, the badging bot then will generate a checklist for me as a reviewer. And it says, thank you for becoming part of this event badging review. Make sure you've looked at these documents, which we should probably review those. I don't actually know if those are up to date, but you know, whatever. <laughs> and then this is this is the the part of the issue that I'm working on. The only thing that I have to focus on is right here as the thing that has my name on it. And then Ruth will have her own down here. And that's what she's going to work from. So then my job is to as a reviewer, as a badger, to go through this um, and just verify the event is about open source technologies and systems. Yes. The event had publicly available information on our website. Yes. Code of conduct was available. Yes. Applicant is the organizer. Yes. So then we're going to go back and see, okay, here was the question that the person was asked, the event app organizer was asked, what's your process? And then here was their answer. So then I'm going to like go through this Q&A thing, read through what they said, and then I'm going to go ahead and mark if they're doing what they said they were doing, they're providing these things. Here's the next section, inclusive experience provide an example of the feedback. You, you remember seeing all this from the application, right? Here's what my answer was, blah, 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 blah. And then as a reviewer, I'm gonna just verify that yes, they're doing this. Yes, they're doing, they're requesting feedback from attendees. Yes, they incorporate feedback from past events. Yes, they're doing this, they're doing this, they're doing this. And I'm gonna keep on going all the way down. Ruth, are you doing yours too? Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> well, you better give Elizabeth Khan a hundred percent because we are very dedicated yeah. here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm giving <laughs> I'm giving my unbiased review here of my own event. Okay, okay, so I um, I'm done now with my review as a badger. I've checked all the checks, or if I didn't see something, I might ping the organizer and say, hey, I didn't see this, but you said this was here, what's going on, that kind of stuff. So I've done all my checks, Ruth is in the process of her doing her checks. So at this point, as a, as a badger, I would say, hey, Elizabeth, I am done with my review. And then that tells me, okay, you're done with your review. When Ruth is done with her review, she would do the same thing something like to that effect. And then at that point, I'm gonna know that I can, as Elizabeth and the maintainer of the badging bot thing, I can run, I'm, I should have had other people playing these roles because it's really can, kind of confusing of who's doing what, but I see Ruth checking in real time. Yes, nice. And then Ruth, um, just let me know that you're done with your review. Yep, all done. Awesome. And then as Elizabeth, the maintainer, I would run the result command to see what kind of a badge they would get. And the badging bot comes back and says, this event is so amazing, it's getting a 100% score. And there were two reviewers. So then I would say, hey, event organizer, Elizabeth N, 
are you okay with this badge? I'm assuming so because it is 100%. So then I would um, just issue the badge with the end command. And not everybody can issue that. So it's not like an organizer can just come in and issue that command themselves <laughs> to get their own badge. It has to be, it's only a certain um, people are allowed to run that, that command here, up here, just in case anybody had that question of what's to stop somebody from just typing that in. Yeah, they can't do that. Um, and then the bot, the bot takes these labels and changes the status of them to review end. Here's the markdown and the HTML um, code that the organizer can then use and put on their own website. Um, yeah. So that's how it goes. And then your job is done as a reviewer. Well, your job is, as a reviewer is done when you are done with your review, really. Um, so I'm going to stop here and ask for questions, because that was a lot I know. So who has questions on that process? Go for it, join us. Okay, um, I wanted to ask, um, okay, first of all, who, who presses the command button? Like who clicks on the command button? Would it be you? Okay, you? Okay, okay. Yeah, the maintainer. So um Elizabeth um is a maintainer, I'm a maintainer. So only the maintainers can, you know, round up like that command button result. Like a reviewer does not have like access to do that. Right. Okay. Just the okay. when the reviewers are done, they indicate tag the maintainer and say, I am done with my review, you know, thank the event organizer for applying for a badge and then you know, the maintainer comes to do like the housekeeping work. All right. Then um, I saw like another requirement. I don't know where it is, but like it was, if it's inclusive with the previous events, like that was a requirement. So I wanted to ask, what if it's like their very first events? That's an excellent question. And I would just say that they would not get that checked. Um, that would, it's so it's almost like they're getting, pen, I guess, penalized maybe a little, but um, yeah, if they can't check the box, they can't check the box. And I think that's also though why, um, if we go back over here and we look at the levels, like they would still, they would still be able to get a gold badge, even if that was not checked, because um, they do only have to get 80% to get the gold badge. Um, so it shouldn't affect them terribly, but yeah, okay. they would not get. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, is there another question? Okay, is the application form to be a badger still open? Yes, of course. Um, I'm actually gonna put this here in the in the chat. I'm gonna put a few links um, for you all. Um, so, and, and also just before we go on, um, as you can tell, like it's not, it doesn't take that long. Obviously I rushed through it because it was all fake data, but it doesn't take a ton of time to do these. I would say maybe 20 minutes um, and you would get one, I don't know, maybe one a month or one every few weeks, I think. We have two times of year where we have a big rush of applications at once, and that would be Oct September, October, and also in the spring, I think like April, May, we'll get another rush as the event organizers figure out their plans for the future. And they, we get a lot from the Linux Foundation and they do all of their event planning kind of at once. So they all put in the applications at once. <laughs> so um, we have those two times a year where you might get a few more, but the goal is not to overload anybody or, or make this like a huge burden on you at all it would be maybe 20 minutes maybe once a month or every uh, once a couple of weeks something like that um some next steps for you if this is still something that you want to do we would absolutely love that um 
we have uh, some next steps for you and I'm going to copy this here and I will send out these links also. So here are some next steps you can do. Oops, I sent that to Joinals. Only Joinals. How do I, what is my deal today? I cannot, I can't do anything. I just need to go back to bed, I think is really the, the answer. I don't know what, <laughs> what's going on with me. Um, okay, so that is a document that you can copy into your own Google Drive, wherever. You can keep it as your own reference. You can cross it off. You can make notes. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, but this is a, some links to some things that you should probably do just to kind of help yourself prepare um, for, a, for an, an assignment, an assigned application. Um, yeah. I am asking, oh, go ahead, Ruth. Yeah, it is, but you didn't add the signal group we have. For yeah, that's in here. Oops. Where? Oh yeah, okay. Well, this is that this is not actually the where's the link? Here we go. Yeah, this like when the form it would. Yeah, so if you are on signal and you want to be added to that group, that is a place where badgers hang out. The other place is the badging channel on Slack. Yeah, you might that... want to add, like in, in brackets, put like your country code to for like the signal one. Yeah. So... You're so smart, Ruth. I love it. Does that save it automatically? I guess it does. Right. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and I think something I would love you to also show is like a real issue, so people get to see like how it looks like, you know, the conversations that go on. Because, um, like Elizabeth said, this is just a test, right? And most of the time, you have to look through the applicant's website. You have to ask them questions. They have to sometimes implement. So maybe Elizabeth, you want to show like a real issue? I know we still have some open, and like yeah, yeah. Um, and you can also um, I put this on the checklist, but you can look at all of the previous applications too to see how they've gone. Here's some actual ones that we went through and closed. Um, but to Ruth's point, we do have a couple that are still open, one that's still open, and it's been open for 13 days. Um, it's just taken a while. Some of them take a little longer than others, and that's totally fine. So this was SodaCon, um, and it's a Linux Foundation uh, um, event in Japan. Stearns Bridget is the organizer who submitted this. So she filled out all of this and here's her. Um, so when we say detail the process, for instance, detail the process for measuring event demographics. This was her answer on our call for proposals page, blah, blah, blah. We require all of these things. And then we ask about diversity, speaker diversity. They do not have all male panels, for instance, that's their, their policy. Um, so they're really trying to make sure that they're um, they are measuring demographics and looking and paying attention to that. Yeah, I'm going to pin, I'm going um, oh, to, to Meet's point, I have this, the slides, the next steps, and the Badger information form. Um, I'm going to pin all of those. I'll share all of that in the badging Slack channel for sure. That's a great point. Um, now, on this um, issue, on the SodaCon issue, sh they do not have this diversity access tickets. That's just not something that they're able to provide yet. And for anybody who isn't sure what that is, it's like a free ticket if you are from like a, um, an ethnic or racial minority where you are, um, or if you are part of a traditionally underrepresented group, so maybe um, part of the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, it's we've seen kind of a, a variety of ways that these tickets are offered. Um, and it's just to help, again, help increase diversity and lower that barrier of entry um, for people who, who want to join these events and just traditionally haven't been welcomed at the events or felt welcome at the events. Um, so in this case, they were not able to do that. So that's totally fine. So she was not able to check that box and that's completely fine. They do not have to get 100% every time on everything. Um, DJ 
went through, Dustin went through and looked at all of these. And there was another one that we, they were not able to verify. To again, totally fine. Um, this part they weren't sure about. How can they access the talks after the event is over? That wasn't clear. And then again, this and then this. Um, and then victory, we had a little bit of back and forth. So then Dustin had a question for the event organizer about um, the nursing rooms and stuff, but he did not feel like he wanted to check those boxes because you couldn't find that information on the website, even though he knew that that was something that they provided because they said it, he just couldn't find it. So, you know, as a as another person, as of someone attending, like you wouldn't be able to find that either. So that's a piece of it is making sure that what they say is something that's publicly available and discoverable and easy to find on their website. So then I pinged the organizer and said, can you shed some light on this discussion about where, how people can find this information? And she said, thanks. She's, she was finishing up an FAQ page. So you can see there is a lot of like back and forth with the organizer. Again, it's supposed to be a partnership. It's not of you're bad or you're good or whatever. It's a more of a partnership of like just helping them kind of think through these things and, and have that other perspective of, you know, um, how, how together we can make the event a little bit better. And then Victory did her check. So that was good. And then we're wait, we were, were waiting, she just commented four hours ago, we were waiting on her to update us when those diversity tickets were going to be made available on the FAQ page, all of that. Um, so she just put that here. So yeah, so now um, Victory and Dustin can go back and review that piece that they had questions about and were not able to check. So as soon as they do that, and then they're done, then we can run the result. Phew, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. I know I threw a ton of stuff at you. Um, yeah, I think that's it. But again, I will link to this presentation. I will link to this document here that you can copy and paste. Um, I will link to this form that you can fill out. Whoops, this form you can fill out. Um, really, we just need your name, email and your GitHub username. Um, and then you want to make sure that you do go through these, make sure you're signing up for some kind of notification on that repo to make sure that you get pinged and that you get notified in some way that your name has been mentioned, or maybe you're watching the whole repo, as Ruth said before, however, however you want to do it. Um, take a look through some of those old applications and then um, as a bonus, maybe attend one of our DEI badging meetings, if you can, or the DEI working group meeting um, and also make sure you're reading through these you've just done a quick read through of these metrics just to see what what they're about and what they're what they're trying to do because these are the these are the metrics that we use for that application so it's important that you kind of know where the metrics also come from okay we have about five minutes left i will again open it up to whoever has questions um feel free to ask Yeah, that's a, a good point. Christian's asking for a link to this recording here pinned in the Slack channel. And absolutely, we can do that. Not a problem. It's a great idea. I will also say there are about 12 badgers or so on the team right now. Um, so in that signal chat or in the badging chat, any questions you have at all, if you get assigned something and you are, are kind of overwhelmed or, or like freaking out a little bit, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. No worries at all. There are tons of people around who can help you sort it out or like go through it with you um, or help answer your questions, like whatever you need. There's a there's a pretty big group of us around now that can help help you go through your first one or two. And then it will, and then it will be a breeze. Then you'll you'll be uh, an expert at it. So, <laughs> I 
Any other questions? All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording here.